Okay. Three, two, one, go. So, this is Lemma, it's a parkour puzzle game for the PC. Um, movement in this game, especially at the beginning, is um, based around bunny hopping and arcing your camera around and strafing left and right in the air, which lets you build up theoretically inf infinite momentum. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's when you uh, start. You have uh, a lot of ground control, so by holding the direction you want to jump in uh, while you land, uh, will just send you that direction. Oh, so yeah. it's a bit different to some other bunny hopping games. Uh, this is the first section of the game called Rain. And we're just bouncing through it at the moment. Um, what I'll mention is that abilities in this game are procedurally unlocked, meaning you can't actually do them until the game tells you about them. So I can't yes. wall run yet, but I'll be able to yes. wall run in a minute. Here in the start, you can basically only jump. Right, I can wall run there, but I didn't need to. You can see these message boxes popping up, and whenever abilities are tell you how to do them. The fastest way to move around is to just need your chain. You're uh, cutting out a bit, but I'm not sure whether that's my fault. Oh yeah, wind sounds. Oh yeah, wind when sounds, you hear a lot of those. We're not actually supposed to move this fast, so... And uh, the game has this wind sound when you're falling. But also when you move really fast, so there's gonna be a lot of wind sound in this run. There are also these signal towers which let you talk to your colleague Mark. And there are a few of these in the game that we have to use to progress. The red floor here will damage you. If you stand on it, you're meant to connect a power line up to... Um, you're meant to connect a power line up which will make the floor uh, white and won't hurt you and also send a platform across the gap so you can get across but you can just jump across the gap with your infinite momentum and this area is called forest there's another puzzle here that you are meant to do but you can skip it as well yeah that's a uh, kind of a theme of the game there's a lot of puzzles but we skip pretty much all of them So there are towers in the corners of the area and you're meant to send them upwards and then flick a switch in the centre of the area which makes some land for you to climb up on but you can just wall run up where the land would be and get to the ledge anyway. Yeah. As you can see usually does a slide before doing a wall run and then actually gives him more height in the wall run. Yeah. There's a little room here which you're meant to break out of by exploding the wall, but we go round it. We do that. Here's a cutscene skip that I'm gonna try. I got it. Let's go. Um so you're meant to blow up this central structure which is called the monolith and that destabilizes the dimension of Lemma. Uh, and then you escape this this area. But what you do instead in any percent is that you can just wall run across that gap and go where you normally would um, after Lemma has been destabilized. You can go there without destabilizing Lemma at all. But the story still treats it as, as if Lemma's been destabilized. Yeah, we, the developer really didn't think that 
about that you could actually get over that gap uh, mm -hmm. when you do <laughs> explode that monolith uh, there will uh, be a bridge that's created there I'm gonna walk backwards because I'm cool in the flashback um, the bunny hopping NES the bunny hopping I don't really know how Portal 2's bunny hopping works but um, it's essentially stringing jumps together and strafing in the air I can walk yeah so uh, uh, and you can also you can buffer your jump inputs um, you can actually hold down space to jump just before you hit the ground and it will still work which makes it a lot easier so and there, that walking with the phone is not intentional it's a pretty fun glitch and uh, saves a bit of time but yeah you can gain momentum in the air while strafing with the keys and with uh, just arcing with your mouse around and combining those gives you even more speed and then you just buffer your jump inputs this set of areas is called fracture and a lot of it is on a timer which you will see in a minute uh, I should mention for the purposes of the game what the game calls areas and doors the game calls doors tesseracts and areas terrines because it's trying to be all fancy like But that doesn't really, that has no bearing on the run, it's just a nice bit of trivia. Okay, so the reason that Fracture is on a timer is that these blocks carry power from one circuit in one terrain to another circuit in another terrain, and you're meant to join them up. Uh, but the actual power blocks that move from terrain to terrain take up a certain of, take up a certain amount of time. Um, and basically if you get to the door before this certain amount of time is up you can just stand there uh, and wait for the power line to go all the way through Portal 2 is move your camera and strafe and scroll wheel for jump okay that sounds a bit similar apart from the um, apart from the jump input buffering I don't think you actually Go on, sorry. Yeah, we uh, we actually talked to the developer in the start of the game. Uh, like we've had a lot of contact with the developer of the game, and uh, at the start we actually wanted him to add the uh, uh, scroll wheel as a input option, but he never got around to it, and we just learned how to, or well, we just managed to do with the uh, jump buffering instead, which actually is easier in my opinion yeah I don't think you actually can map something to a scroll direction I got caught by the cloud nah. that's not great yeah this is oh probably dear. The <laughs> I went the safe route uh, to try to avoid RNG of that cloud following me but it still got me that's alright yeah I guess this is the biggest part of RNG in the run that cloud can either just completely ignore you or wreck your day. Hmm. I think I managed to save it all right there, though. It didn't go too disastrously. Oh, I missed the second um, walking and texting bit. But that's all right. It's only two messages. do here is ledge grab then do a kick um, close to the floor after grabbing the ledge which gives me more momentum to cross that gap This area of the game is called Fortress. Um, if you die here it's horrible because you get sent back really close to the start. So don't die here. You're meant to 
light up three switches to bring this wall down but what you can do is jump create a wall with the follower cubes you've gained um oh dear uh we're safe um create a wall with the follower cubes that you've just gained which gives you the ability to spawn blocks from thin air um, and then jump and create another wall which gives you enough momentum to um, gives you enough momentum to climb over the wall I'm not sure why that didn't work just there I'll try that again well I think I know why I'll clear off that space yeah this, this uh, self created block mechanic is really <laughs> Really hard to control and yeah. have screwed up a lot of runs. Okay, that second bit was what I call fortress cheese. You just ride up on the blocks that rise from the water and then jump onto the underside of the central fortress structure and climb up on top of it. Um, about here is a good time for donations to be read out but it's also where I'm going to cut off the um, I'm going to cut off the donation bid war for the endings so if I could find out what ending has won thank you and here's a really long texting section This is the beginning of the section called Mark. Uh, the game from this point on becomes open world rather than linear. So yeah, what's this is the this is the last chapter and also more than half of the game. So. Are yeah. oh, you wanting to know the results of the donation center? Yes, please. Okay, so it's going to be ending B. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. We did just, however, get a $13.33 donation. Ooh. Um, and it reads $200 hype. Oh. Let's go, Pokemon Channel. Also put this donation towards you named Pokehero Undertale. So that puts us to $200.10. Oh, good job, everybody. Good job. So, what you're meant to do in this bit of the game is. Um, light up two switches to bring the tower in the middle of this area down and let you get the follower cubes inside it uh, but you can gain enough height and then all run across it to get to the tower um, without having to bring it down the reason why we get these is to uh, choose whether to save or kill the three scientists. Yeah, you need the cubes to get into the areas with the three scientists. S um, Lemma is collapsing and killing the three scientists is meant to, according to Mark, um, stop Lemma from collapsing. But um, whether it's you're meant to make the choice between practical uh, a practical choice and an ethical choice, I think, is what the developer was going for.
Yeah, this uh, this game becomes really fast once you have these follower cubes, since you can go in much straighter lines. Oh yeah. And keep also, up your uh, bunny jumps. Yeah. I'm not sure if this bit of the game is RNG, but when you're climbing up these pillars, uh, sometimes a block can spawn inside you, and will often kill you and send you quite far back. And this is the area with the first scientist, whose name is Daniel. And ending B is killing two people and saving one. Uh, I am going to kill Daniel. Wait, isn't ending B killing all? Or is that... Some other ending. <laughs> Sorry? Isn't the uh, ending B killing all of them? No, um, ending B is, it, uh, is killing two, saving one. Ending A is killing oh all yeah. of them. Oh yeah. So there, by walking into the explosion that kills the scientists, uh, the game's respawn system gets uh, a bit confused and uh, sends him back uh, to a safe position. What I've just done here, instead of climbing down that area, I have just uh, wall run all the way down it, jumped to slow myself down a bit, and wall run off another surface. Uh, which takes me right to the way into the next area. This is the place where you get the second set of follower cubes, the blue follower cubes. The last ones were the yellow ones, and there are blue, yellow and white ones. Oh. I uh, missed the window a little bit, but that's fine. Oh yeah, it's quite a lot like that, um, Lord Ape, it's, um, you spend a lot of the time playing this game, uh, with the wind rushing past your ears and the camera shaking violently, uh, but you, uh, you get used to it, just connected up a power grid to open this tesseract, or door. Oh, weird log spawns sent me off uh, to the left. All right, this is a puzzle in the game that we don't actually skip. Uh, what we do here is light up two lights uh, out of out of the three that are in this area. And what that does is rise up the door that we need to go into from the ground. Coming up is something called light puzzle skip. You have to light up a bunch of lights to open the door in this room. But there's a gap in the back of the chamber you need to go into. Uh, that you can wall run under and climb up from. This is one of the really great skips because doing this puzzle casually was a pain in the ass. It was an absolute nightmare. I think it took both me and one other runner around one hour to find the last light, which we just missed. Yeah, it's very annoying and this is the darkest room in the game as well which makes it 
very difficult to find everything. I got a first try though, the skip, which is good. And I'm going to save the second person and uh, also do another death warp. But this death warp uh, will take me um, right back to the beginning of the area. So I can just walk backwards and leave. Thanks for the shout out, NES. There is another puzzle here where you are meant to uh, light up a huge power grid that goes around a large portion of the area, but you can just wall run, grab the wall that you've created, and climb up the third and final tower that you're meant to be on, and then just wall run to where the white follower cubes are. Whoa. We can just jump down and if a block spawns a nice just fly to the exit. What I did there, why I went off diagonally to the right is that I was um, holding right, I've done it again by accident when I was touching the ground and because you have a huge amount of control over your direction on the ground uh, during bunny hopping I flew off to the right and I managed to do that twice a lot of the time, a lot of the time that can kill you but thankfully it was in a decent place both times there Yeah, that's pretty common in the start that you fly off to the sides very often since you have to uh, release these uh, side arrows like A and D, otherwise you just fly off to the sides all the time. So yeah, you're coming up to the last guy now. Yeah, um, this this scientist is called Jemmy. Did I mention the second one's called Calvin? He's called Calvin. They're called Dalvin, D Dalvin, Daniel, Calvin, and Jemmy in that order. Yeah, there are notes placed all over the place to uh, like kind of give you a feel about who they are. Yeah. I think to make you decide whether they're, it's worth having them live or not. We don't death warp here, what we do is um, just climb through the gap made by the explosion and drop down to the exit. Alright, I'm going to uh, give a warning. Ending B happens to be the ending, that is a jump scare. So uh, turn your volume down now if you don't want to be jump scared because it's quite loud. Uh, time is coming up very shortly. It'll be when uh, the ending cutscene starts to load. I will c I'll tell when. Time. All right. Well, that is uh, that is Lemma. Uh, any percent? Uh, 
go and tell Evan Todd that you like this speedrun if you want to. Uh, let me find his Twitter. Yeah, his Twitter is at etodd underscore. And he is a cool guy. And he makes cool games. Go and say hi. Uh, thank you very much, Kirby. Thank you.